In this video, I'm going to talk about evaluating operations with functions. Okay, so before we were just evaluating functions, and we had something like f of x equals maybe negative 3x, and then I said, like, what's f of 4? Right, so then you plug 4 in for x, and you evaluated f at 4. So now we're going to go to the next step, and we have a function f and a function g. So what we're going to find is f of negative 1 plus g of 3. Okay, so what this means is we're going to evaluate f at negative 1, and we're going to evaluate g at 3, and then we're just going to add up those two values, whatever they may be. So f at negative 1 is just going to be 3 times x. In our case, we're going to plug negative 1 in for x. So right there, 3 times negative 1. And then we're going to plug 3 in for g, so 3 in for this one right there. So 2 times 3 minus 5. You can, if you want to, kind of put brackets around here so you're keeping the operations separate from one another so you know what's what. So 3 times negative 1 will be negative 3 plus, and we have 2 times 3 is 6 minus 5. So negative 3 plus 1 will be negative 2. So we can say this operation with functions f at negative 1 plus g at 3 is going to be negative 2 whenever we simplify that. In this second example, we have two new functions. f is going to be defined as 3 minus 2x, and g is going to be defined as the square root of this quantity, x plus 4. So what we're going to find is f of negative 3 plus g of 5. Okay, so that means we're going to evaluate f at negative 3, so we're going to plug negative 3 into our f function. So our f function is going to be 3 minus 2x, but then negative 3 is my value there. I'm going to add to that my g function, so the square root of x plus 5, so, or excuse me, x plus 4, and 5 is going to go in for my x, so 5 plus 4. So when I reduce this one, this will be a 3, and then negative 2 times negative 3 will be a positive 6. Okay, and then plus the square root of 5 plus 4 is 9. Okay, so easy, uh, 3 plus 6 is 9, plus the square root of 9 is 3, so 9 plus 3 will be 12. So the operation of functions here, f of negative 3 plus g of 5, will use these two function definitions, f and g. It will find the respective values and then simplify, so we get 12 for that example. In this third example, we have two new function definitions. f will be defined as 2x squared plus 3x minus 1, and g will be defined as 1 over the quantity x plus 2. So this one's a little different, so we're going to find 3 times f of 1, which means we need to find what f will be when I evaluate it at 1, and that value will be multiplied by 3 then minus 6 times g of negative 5, so we will evaluate g at negative 5 and multiply it by 6, and then subtract that whole quantity then from what we had at the beginning. So let's go ahead and substitute our values in. So I'll have 3 times, and then f of 1. So f of 1 means I'm going to plug 1 in for these x's, so 2 times 1 squared plus 3 times 1 minus 1, then I'm going to subtract 6 times, and our g with a negative 5 in there will be 1 over, it will be negative 5 plus 2 there in the denominator. So we have this huge expression here. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, use the order of operations and slowly simplify it. So 3 times, so 1 squared is just 1, and then 2 times 1 is just 2. 3 times 1 is 3. So inside here we have 2 plus 3 minus 1. Then we'll say minus 6 times, let's see, this negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3, so it'll be 1 over negative 3, but we don't really like to have that negative in the denominator, so I'll just kind of bring them up, up top. Remember, you can either put it on top or out front, but we just don't like to leave negatives in the denominator. But at this point, that looks a lot better. So let's go ahead and simplify what's inside here. 2 plus 3 is 5, minus 1 is 4. So 3 times 4, 
And here you'll notice we have a minus and a minus, so we're going to subtract, or excuse me, we're going to well, subtract this negative, but really we're multiplying two negatives. So I can just go swoosh, swoosh, and uh, make those both positive there. And then we're going to say 6 times 1 third, you could say 6 over 1 if you wanted to. So we can uh, do some reduction, we can take a 3 out of both the numerator and the denominator, and that becomes 2 and 1. So it looks like it's just 2 times 1, which should be 2. So, 12 plus 2 should equal 14. So we had that really crazy expression here at the beginning, but really we just used the order of operations, and we took baby steps, and we simplified it all the way down, and we just got 14 for that one. In our last example here, we have two different functions, and these are a little easier than the last one was. f of x equals just x minus 2, and g of x uh, equals 3x plus 7. And we're finding this huge expression here, so 2 times f of 5, and that's all going to be divided by 3 times g of negative 1. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. We'll come down here. We'll say it's going to equal, let's see, 2 times, and then f at 5. So we're going to evaluate f at the value of 5. So when you plug 5 in there, I'll get 5 minus 2 all over 3 times, when I plug negative 1 in for g, it's going to be 3 times negative 1 and then plus 7. We can kind of work our way across here. So this 5 minus 2 will be 3, so 2 times 3 for the numerator. The denominator will be 3 times, we've got 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, and then plus 7. Okay, so as we continue over, 2 times 3 is 6, over, and then we have negative 3 plus 7 will be 4. So 6 over 3 times 4 is 12. So this is actually going to come out pretty nice. So 6 over 12 can be reduced just to 1 half. So 1 half was my answer. So let's bring it way back over. When I had f as this function, g as this function, and then I found this expression right there, and that ended up being 1 half.